Misa together. Doing both separately, but they're so good together. I can't help but just make a little show about that. And some of this tea process. So, here we go again. Starting with a different pu'er, the Shin Chi Old Tree. Which is a loose leaf. I believe it's an 800 year old tree, which I really enjoy about the pu'ers that a lot of them are five to 500 to a thousand years old or more. And so these villagers just get to, you know, farm and wildcraft their, their ancient old growth trees that their grandparents were picking on back in the day and their great grandparents. And pretty sustainable, it would seem. I'm going to use a chunk of this, uh, this block, this dewy peak. A lot of people, I'm breaking rules, people don't be blending teas like this. This one. A lot of people don't, and like to taste each one individually, and I do like that, and try them all individually, but I like big blends of stuff. It's just part of who I am. We're starting slow. Again, all the pu'ers, we're going to rinse to get all the tannins out. So starting with those, and this one's the Numi pu'er. I'm going to use the end of that. This Numi is more commercially available. They seem to be a pretty big, bigger company, but still kind of taking care of the little people as far as I can tell, which is nice. And, um, uh, yeah, a lot of them, when I look them up, and it's all in Chinese, I don't speak Chinese, and I know this stuff's pretty decent, and it's organic, and they seem to be pretty cool, so that's that one, a lot darker, and this kind of smaller loose leaf. Which you can find this in bags a lot, the new me's getting out there, and they, they seem to be pretty cool. Especially if you're buying bag tea. So. Just go ahead and give these a rinse. Again, all the pu'ers want the rinse, but especially the older aged teas, they really get those tannins. And you really want to get them out because they just sit in your mouth. Once you got them, they're just sitting in your mouth all day tasting yeah. bad. And I'm not into it, but the kombucha is. Just give it a swirl. Always give it a swirl. Get the goodness out. Put the goodness in. Awakening the tea, tea to awaken yourself, awakening the tea. So it's still kind of golden, a little bit brown. I always feel like there's a little red in the first, but it's more amber. the first rinse of the pu'er, which is about the only tea I would do that to, but I'm sure you could experiment with others, other black teas. You're going to get a lot of the caffeine out in the first rinse, so after that it's going to be decaf-ish. On the first, the more you go, the more decaf it is. But this guayusa, again, does not need free rinse. There's no tannins. Which is part of what a lot of people like about it. Makes it easy and drinkable. So I'm going to go ahead and add that one. Let's see. Show you in that light. And this is a pretty finely cut. It's a pretty dark for a green tea. 
somewhere in between, I feel like a green and a black. And can be steeped for a long time. And together, these just get dark and rich and earthy. And together, I feel like are one of the better, I want to say substitutes, because like a coffee replacement, you really need something besides coffee, but you really, really need that warm cup of something that's real hearty and earthy and energizing, and this blend's got it. You know, I, I know, I know coffee drinkers, you don't want to hear it. I know, because I've been that coffee drinker. I got started eating them, eating the fresh berries, drank a lot of coffee this last year, especially on the hemp farm. Wake up with six shots of espresso to start the day, and then I got the mold really intense, and it would react to the coffee, so I got back in rootsy, getting into the tea. And this puer, com this puer and uh, guayusa together really, really do it. Can you see? It's getting darker. It's getting there. And again, the guayusa still got the caffeine. I'm gonna rinse the caffeine out of the puer generally, but then the guayusa's got it and really level. It's got a bunch of extra alkaloids. It's got a bunch of protein. It's got 15 essential amino acids in the guayusa. There's a lot of stuff to, and some people use it as a appetite suppressant and to lose weight. I feel like both of these together, they'll really, they'll really kind of fill you up. You get a lot of protein just from a plant and all kinds of minerals and it's a much cleaner, more balanced energy, which coffee's great. It's got a bunch of antioxidants. It's way up there, but as a drink, then, you know, it's, it gets more acidic when you brew it. I feel like coffee's a better food. Green coffee beans alkalizing, energizing. But these teas want to be brewed, so if you need the warm, hot, the earthy richness with the energy, and you just need that sensation and that thing to hold, you know, I get you, I feel you, and I feel like this is a great one. Uh, I'll show you in this. Yeah, see how dark? And that's the second rinse. Generally, the third on the puer is going to be the darkest. So I'm going to go ahead and just steep that again. I'll just re-steep it. And just partly to show you how many times this can be done. You can sit and just drink tea. Or, you know, if you... You make this for breakfast, and then you re-steep it at lunch, and then you re-steep it at dinner, and it gets less caffeine, more of the minerals, does a nice kind of throughout the day. Ooh. You can just drink on the same pot of tea all day long, if you can. I tend to just sit and drink tea, and that's kind of how tea ceremony goes. And people use these little tiny clay cups. This is more traditional Chinese style. And so it cools faster, and a little bit less, so you're just kind of sipping the tea, getting a little taste. things tea makes you slow down a little it gives you the energy but it makes you slow down a bit and sit and blow on the tea is always nice nothing else add the air element you got the water element you got your fire element you got your earth add a little air everything's got that ether Just 
dark, earthy. I let this steep a little long. 30 seconds. It's not too dark, but it's still pretty dark, and that's the third rinse on that. Pouring it a little fast and spilling. They say good tea often is poured by someone with a steady hand, but the best tea is poured by someone steady at heart. And it is part of the art. There's an art to every part. If you want there to be, and if not, it doesn't have to be too complicated. Don't be too intimidated. No one does it like you. You are a beautiful and unique snowflake. Play around. I really enjoy this, especially if you're a coffee drinker. I feel like this, at least for me, when I had to switch, this really did it. I don't want to tell you because I know because I've been the coffee drinker. Hey, drink tea. Yeah, one. <laughs> uh, I get you. I feel you. Especially when I did um, have to quit the coffee was because I had mold very intensely. I stomped about 20,000 moldy hemp plants. I was in a cloud for days, real sick, and the mold would react. And when I had the coffee, it was either go fall asleep under a tree somewhere and feel sick all through my being, or go sit at Gong Fu Tea House until they closed. Or until, you know, I get in dragon and leave, able to verbally communicate and talk and hold myself up and be clear in my mind and just everything feeling better. Was a bit of money, was a bit of time, totally worth it, really amazing. If you're in Ashland, go to Gong Fu. If you're not, go to Ashland and go to Gong Fu. Cheers, guys. Thanks for introducing me to Pu'er. Alright, well, if that sums it up, thanks, cheers.